The first step to building an assembly is inserting the first part or set of parts. To do this, click the Insert command in the toolbar, and the Insert Parts and Assemblies dialog appears. At the top of the dialog, you can insert parts or assemblies from the current document or from other documents. You can also insert standard content such as bolts, nuts, or washers. In this video, let's look at the current document options. To learn more about the other document and standard content options, check out the Onshape Assemblies course in the Fundamental CAD pathway. Next, select the tab types you want to insert from, either a part studio or an assembly. The part studio option allows you to insert parts, sketches, or surfaces contained in a part studio. Expand the part studio to select entities from it. Clicking on the part studio is just a shortcut to insert all the entities of that part studio and does not make a reference to the part studio itself. This is an important distinction. Assemblies do not reference part studios, but they reference the actual part, sketch, or surface that was inserted. If you create new parts in that part studio later, they are not automatically inserted into the assembly. The assemblies option inserts another assembly into the active assembly, creating a hierarchical structure of the design. The search function can be helpful to locate specific entities to insert in larger documents with several tabs. Use the filters to find parts, sketches, or surfaces to insert. Note, filters only display for the available entity types. Then select from the dialog what you want to insert, and it appears in the graphics area. Generally, the first part is positioned relative to the assembly origin. Clicking in the graphics area automatically places the selected parts at that location in the assembly space. Selecting the green check mark, on the other hand, automatically places the part in the same orientation and position with respect to the origin that it was originally modeled in the part studio. Notice in the instance list, each part, sketch, or surface inserted is listed with the corresponding icon. Again, notice that there is not a part studio listed in the instance list. Some onshapers like to insert all needed parts at once, and some like to insert components as they continue to create the assembly. This is a personal preference, and you can decide what works best for you. You can always insert more components at any time by selecting the Insert command again. If you inserted too many parts, just select the needed instance, right-click, and choose Delete. If another instance of the same component is needed, just click on it again in the Insert dialog, or copy and paste the original. To do this, right-click on the part and select Copy, or press the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-C. Then right-click into the white space of the graphics area and select Paste, or Ctrl-V. The instance number is next to the part name in the instance list, and identify the unique part instance. This does not record the quantity and does not renumber if an instance is deleted. When working in the same document, if a part geometry is changed in the part studio, all the instances update in the assembly with the change. In fact, you can open each tab of the document at the same time and view the updates in real time. Currently, none of the parts in this assembly are constrained with mates, so they can be dragged about the assembly space. It is common when working with assemblies to fix a part in space and mate the other parts to define the needed position and motion. This is explained in the next videos.